Okay, uh, so we are on to this uh, lecture three of machine learning uh, two. This is uh, up to now we have dealt with uh, the concept of uh, random variables. Uh, we have seen uh, how we can formulate the concept of probability distributions uh, from random variables. Uh, we have seen the different probability distributions. We have seen their formula. We have discussed the logistic function in minute detail, the sigmoid family of functions, which includes the logistic and the hyperbolic tangent function. Uh, so today we have to start with the joint probability distribution. Okay. Okay. So I did this last time a bit, but uh, obviously we'll go through this again. So up to now we have done uh, two types of uh, distributions. One is the discrete random variable distribution, which is called a probability mass function, which defines the probability of the values of the random variables when they are discrete. That is called the probability mass function. And when the random variable is continuous, like age or sales or uh, you know some density or whatever, customer density, whatever, then we have the probability density function. Okay, so for example, the uh, the most famous example is the normal distribution curve, which is the probability density curve. Other than that, we have so many other distributions like uh, chi-square distribution, T distribution, F distribution, V-bull distribution, Poisson distribution, exponential distribution, logistic distribution, which we saw last time in minute detail. So you must have knowledge of all these distributions if you are to um, basically call yourself a machine learning engineer. Okay. So now we are the on we are using the case when we have more than one random variable and they are basically uh, playing with each other. So you have to assume two values now to calculate a probability rather than just one value of one random variable. So we'll see some examples. So we are always given a set of random variables. Now we are assuming the bivariate case, just two random variables. But in the case of normal training data, we have so many random variables. Every column is a separate random variable, right? Or if you have like maybe five columns, so you have five different probability distributions or random variables. So given two random variables x, y, the joint PD gives the probability that each pair x, y falls in a particular range or discrete set of values specified for that variable. So like uh, there's a univariate ke case mein tha ke either we have discrete or continuous. In the same way for the joint probability distribution, either you can have a discrete set of values and discrete set of x, y pairs uh, for which you can calculate the value, or you can have a range of values of X and a range of values of Y. That's it. So for example, if you are comparing, uh, we'll see the examples, age and weight. Age and weight are two continuous random variables. So if you consider them together, so that's a joint continuous probability distribution. And if you are considering something like the number of children and the number of cars one has, so that is a discrete to discrete random variables because we can't have continuous number of children or continuous number of cars. They are discrete, right? Okay, is this thing clear? So expressed as a joint PDF and used to calculate the marginal. So marginal basically means when I have uh, the joint of X and Y, so I can use the joint probability density function to calculate either the uh, density for X or the density for Y separately. That's called a marginal. Okay. And the other thing you do is to calculate the conditional probability distribution. Okay. So, uh, joint ke case mein teen cheeze hain. One is the concept of joint itself. So now we have uh, two or more random variables together and you have to calculate the probability of their values occurring together. So I will ask the, what is the probability that someone has uh, three children and two cars? So calculate the probability for that that's part of the joint pdf okay and the uh, other thing you do is to calculate the marginal marginal means that i'm given two random variables like age and weight of a customer for example okay. 
so i know that these they are together in a joint but i am asking only about the age what is the probability that age will take on a value uh, between 35 and 55 so that means i have to sum up across all the weights so that becomes the marginal for age similarly i can calculate the marginal for weight okay and the third thing which is related to this to so is the conditional probability which which you guys already know the conditional probability distribution probability of a given b so we have a very famous formula probability of uh, a given b equals to probability of a and b together divided by probability of b okay this is a formula for the bayesian a uh, very famous formula you must be knowing about this the conditional probability of a given b equals to probability of a and b together divided by probability of b if it is for conditional probability of b given a that's again equals to pa comma b divided by probability of a okay so this is the joint you must ab to samajh mein aa gayi hogi this is the marginal okay because it's a single probability and this is the conditional so the the joint and the marginal and the conditional are related by this formula that's it okay so we'll see some very clear examples now to make you understand but ye sari cheeze baad mein aa rahi uh yeah so this is a very simple example when i have two random variables uh x and y okay so obviously uh x is varying across a range of values so across which range of values is x varying here can anyone tell me uh yeah so minus 3 to 3 okay and y is also varying from minus 3 so you can plot this in mat matlab or python such a plot uh provided that this joint is a non gaussian gaussian ko plot karna sabse aasan hai you can easily plot a gaussian it's not a problem so here i am assuming that the joint pdf is a gaussian shaped pdf because it's a bell shaped curve so yeah so just to make it uh, clear for your understanding it's a joint pdf and every point on this curve represents what any point on this curve represents what a probability right but based on two values not based on one value that's the difference okay um and obviously you can have more than two also but that's difficult to visualize this is another example very simple example so we are varying between 4 and 4 and x is varying between 0 and 4 and uh, yeah so we have this very strange shape of the joint pdf this is a pretty simple example this is also gaussian shape so p represents what the probability It's a probability density. So now we are thinking in terms just of uh, the the joint density. And now with something very childish to make you understand everything very quickly. Say, so this was uh, the example for a discrete uh, random variable, right? So the sum of the probability is equal to one, and there are just three values it can take. Uh, but sometimes we are simul. simultaneously interested in more than one variable at the same time okay so because we are looking for a relationship between the two variables so i probably did not teach you in data wrangling but uh, did you do the chi square test chi square test kiya tha na so i can do a chi square test between the product category and the customer type so customer type can be gold or silver whatever so and the and the null hypothesis in this case is ke um the customer type the sale of a particular product is not affected by any customer type hum ye nahi keh sakte ke ye particular product jo hai wo flaa particular customer type khareed raha hai that's the null hypothesis and the alternate is the converse of that okay so we are looking for a relationship between the two variables so in the case when we have Uh, two or more random variables we have to do the joint okay. for example this is a very uh, discrete ke case mein number of years in college this is a discrete number obviously uh, versus the number of credits taken for example you got 130 credits or 60 credits or 70 credit hours whatever 
number of cigarettes smoked per day versus the day of the week so these are two random variables and i can ask what is the probability that someone smokes five cigarettes a day uh, and the day of the week is three you can calculate the probability for that that will be a joint one okay the time when the bus driver picks you up that's continuous obviously so you can measure that in the number of hours i don't know or maybe days versus the quantity of caffeine in the bus driver system is he awake or not because if he is sleepy then he might be you know driving the bus slowly so you can you can uh, kind of compare these two and find out the probabilities of different combinations this is a continuous case similarly dosage of a drug in milliliters versus the blood compound measure so uh, this uh, i think the health care people will be able to understand this better but this is just an example from the health care domain so very simple example nothing complicated a uh, marginal will be when you ask a question about the probability of only one of the variable both both yeah both it's always possible so we'll see marginal how to calculate that just wait um so in general if x and y are two random variables uh, the probability distribution that defines their simultaneous that's the word behavior is called a joint pdf okay as a joint density or a joint mass function whatever so here for example uh, y can take on 1 2 3 x can take on 1 2 3 and here i have listed all the probabilities um for example the role of two dice is is can could be something which is called the uh, modeled by a joint pdf so you can see that we have some zeros as well so 1 and 1 or 2 and 2 and 3 and 3 cannot occur together so this is probably some specific uh, scenario uh yeah so this is a game so we can we can plot it if we have two random variables and the number line is uh, in our control so hum plot kar sakte hain so iski koi lab mein aapko de dunga banane ke liye to you can just you know copy the code and just modify it and then try and try out different functions to see how it looks bell shape will be easy to see so ye uh, this is the notation for the joint the case f x comma y and x comma y that's the notation okay uh oh sorry about that yeah so i i told you either we have a joint probability mass function or a joint pdf ye to clear hai na but this is this is a, this is clear so now this is a very simple example plastic covers for cds so cd plastic cover can take on only a specific number of values i can't have a continuous because a cd is a particular size so i have two things one is the x uh, the length of the cover and the other is the width of the cover and so both of these are discrete numbers in this case although uh, logically speaking they are continuous but in the case of cd covers they are discrete because length can only be 129 130 and 131 mm and the possible values of the width are 15 and 16 that's it okay so we have a discrete case so i can i can model it like this we have six possible pairs and uh, i have calculated the probability like this and similarly when i sum up all the of the probabilities of the table then it should add up to one okay uh the highest probability kaun si hai 130 comma 15 so this is the cover which is most probable uh, based on the covers jo ki aap logo ne kiye and this is the covers which is the least uh, probable uh, from the from the covers that people have taken or people have done whatever so joint probability mass function is is written like this obviously and you can use that to calculate uh, any particular pair you want you can calculate the probability for for that okay so for example fxy 129 15 equals 2.12 theek hai ji clear pretty simple up to now yeah so in the case of marginal now you can see what what happens uh, if you are given such a table which will not always be the case you will have to estimate the probabilities okay then you can in, uh, obtain the individual probabilities for x and y so i can ask a yaar uh, what is the probability that the width of the cd is 15 right so that's a marginal question because i have a joint so in this case i will sum up these three because width 15 is applicable for these three together 
if i say what is the probability that uh, length is 129 then this probability is 0 0.08 plus 0 0.12 I can't multiply because they are not independent events. So they are probabilities. So I have to sum them up. They are mutually ex mutually exclusive. This and this. So that's called a margin. That's it. Or marginal is because it comes in the margins here. Right. So if I sum up these three numbers, it will come in the margin here. If I sum up these three numbers, it will come in the margin here. And similarly, these three summations will come in the margin here. And if you add all these five, then again, it will be one. Or it not, no. No, that might not be one, sorry. The, inside the table, it will be one. Outside the table, it will not be one. It will be more than one, probably. So, but, uh, these two should add, add up to one, I think. Yeah? And these three should add, add up to one. So that's, that's how you can, that's called just a simple, the marginal, okay? So just remember this uh, word, marginal. Right, so here, uh, given a basic example, so I calculated the marginals like this, okay. And the, um, yeah, so this is for the 15. So when X is 15, sorry, the, when Y is 15, so I have, uh, no, sorry. Ah, so this is for the case when 129, 130, 131. So these are the marginals for the length. Um, because the probability mass functions appear in the margin, so they are called the marginal distributions. So this is the bivariate use case. Okay, we have uh, the basic concepts are still the same. So any joint probability calculated in the table has supposed to have a value greater than or equal to zero, because all our probabilities, uh, if you sum up in the discrete case, all of them then should uh, sum up to one, and you can express one unique probability like this. So. That's as simple. So we have already seen the example of this. Um, yeah, so marginal mass function, ko ka, this is the way. If you are summing across the other one, so just write the other one here and just, this is the joint function summation and just you just have to add this subscript here to, to indicate that it's a marginal. And uh, obviously when, when it is written Y here, then you are taking the marginal for X. And when it is written X here, you're taking the margin of a Y. As simple as that. This function is going to remain the same. It's just a notation that you have to uh, keep in mind. Uh, yes. Yeah. So this is clear. We just not, don't need to spend too much time here. Huh. So when asked for the expected value or the variance of one of the variables, which is uh, participating in a marginal distribution. So I have the length of the CD cover and the width of the CD cover. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, okay, if I, tell me the expected value of the length of the CD cover. So to find out the expected value, I must know first of all the values, the marginal values, right? So that I can then multiply the marginal values by their respective numbers. So for example, uh, If I uh, if I find out the expected value of the length x x is the length right? Huh. Yeah, x ki ye, uh, this is the this is the table here right? If I tell you okay, find out the expected value so that's easy right? What is it? One twenty nine into this plus one thirty into this plus one thirty one into this so that's the expected value so first for that you have to find out the marginal. Okay, so whenever you are given a joint distribution table and you are asked about the expected value or the variance of a, one of the variables, so first find out the marginal and then calculate the expected value. That's the only way to do that. So let's see some example. Um, huh, so we're talking about batteries. Batteries basically means the cells. They call it the battery. Our batteries are the UPS mein hoti hai, ghaadi mein hoti hai. Suppose that two batteries are randomly chosen without replacement from the following group of 12 batteries. So I have 12 batteries, uh, 9, 10, and 12. So three are new, char jo hai, purane ho gaye, four are old, five are defective batteries. But I have them together. Okay. And I have to select how many? Two. Okay. So 
all the possible use cases in which I can select two batteries, I have to model them, right? So let X denote the number of new batteries to the, um, right? So uh, I'm interested in new and old, okay? Because these, these are the two variables which okay, are coming. A new battery is an old. Hai. Uh, I'm not interested in the defective one, although this could be selected as well. But let's let's say okay, I'm only, as I'm choosing two, so my two random variables are the selection of a new battery, how many new batteries, and why, how many old batteries, uh, used batteries. Okay? So that's that's what I've done. So now what, what is going to happen? So I'm being asked to calculate the joint probability distribution. So I have to uh, basically, I have closed the fan a little bit. If you want to turn the fan on, let me just... Uh... Okay, so I'm going to I'm being sensitive about my health, so I'm going to turn the fan on a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, online... Six people online, okay. Right, so this is a bit, uh, you have to be a bit intuitive about the solution, right? Okay. X is the new number of new batteries and Y is the number of uh, old batteries, right? So X can take on how many values? Any, if, I, if I select two batteries, it is possible that I don't select any new battery. So I can have a zero. It is possible I make out of two, I select one. And it is also possible that I select both new. Okay, so X can take on value 0, 1, 2. Ditto for the old case. I can either select, uh, never select an old battery. I can select it once or I can select it twice. Provided that I'm picking two batteries. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So that's why it is written here. X can take on value 0, 1, 2, and Y can take on value 0, 1, 2. So, yeah. so because I have to create the joint PDF, right? So to create a joint PDF, first I, I need to understand that X ki kon kon si values ho sakti, Y ki kon kon si values ho sakti. That's pretty simple here. Okay, ye humne bana liya, okay? Uh, when we consider them jointly, then X plus Y less than or equal to 2. Why is that? Huh? X plus Y. Yeah. You might be tempted to say X plus Y less than or equal to four. Do is key, do is key. But I'm only selecting two batteries. At the most, I can have a value of two of either X or Y. So that's why X plus Y is less than or equal to two. It is always, those are the select Karin around. How can I have three there? So X can vary between zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So X can be two, Y can be zero, X can be one, Y can be one, X can be zero, Y can be two, and so on. Again, so that's the equation that we have formulated from that. So you need to be a bit innovative. Also, all combinations obviously are not possible. And now, uh, in order to determine the, uh, you know, when we have this uh, permutation, you must be knowing about this permutation. So permutation helps me uh, select this such a scenario when I have n objects taken R at a time. So I have a total of uh, 12 objects and I'm selecting them two at a time. Okay, so for, for this kind of scenario, I, I use the concept of permutation. So permutation is n factorial over n minus R factorial. Okay, so n factorial is what? n into n minus one into n minus two into n minus three into up to one, then that's it. It's so clear, right? So what is two factorial? Permutation. What is two factorial? Two into one. Two. What is three factorial? Six, three into two into one. So that's pretty simple, okay? Yeah. Now, why we need the permutation in this case? Ke we designed uh, six possible selection scenarios. Okay, I have to select two and I have three different types of batteries, old, used, and defective. So what are the possible scenarios? So the first scenario is no new, no used. I select all defective. 
So selecting all defective, I have five defective batteries in which I have to select two. So I have five objects taken two at a time. Don't worry, if you get a numerical, then it will be like this. You just sir? know how to calculate. Sir? D? Sir, why we are selecting defective? जब हमने बात की है कि हमें न्यू और यूज्ड पे करना है तो हम कर नहीं रहे हम वी कैन डू दैट बिकॉज इट इज पार्ट ऑफ द होल बैटरी सेट व्हिच इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस वी आर टेकिंग रैंडमली सो वी कैन सेलेक्ट अ डिफेक्टिव आल्सो इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर अस टू डू दैट राइट वो मतलब तीनों किस्म की बैटरी हमारे सामने पड़ी है और हमने रैंडमली उठाना है वी डो नॉट नो के जब तक हम उठाएंगे नहीं हमें पता नहीं चलेगा उठाने के बाद हम रिप्लेस नहीं कर सकते उसको सो वी हैव टू टेक इट एज इट इज दैट्स द थिंग सो फाइव परम्यूटेड टू टाइम्स आई हैव फाइव डिफेक्टिव बैटरीज तो आई हैव सेलेक्ट टू ऑफ देम तो फाइव टू ओके वी वी राइट इट लाइक दिस इन पेरेंथिसिस फॉर्म देयर कुड बी अदर वेज ऑफ राइटिंग इट एज़ वेल डिवाइडेड बाय 12 टू व्हाई because i have total 12 and i have to select two from the 12 so when you solve it using this equation so i am left with 10 over 66 this is simple aap isko calculate kar le uh 5 2 12 2 i'll just show you one we are developing the joint pdf right now okay so that is one use case in which i don't select any x or y all defective and similarly i can select one used and no new so no new means what one used and one defective divided by 12 2 if i am not selecting any any new one that means ke ek when do uthai hai na to ek used hai to other one should be defective So I have to multiply them. Get okay, this and this. Okay. Similarly, no new, two used. So two used, four two because four used. Then so I know it's just two lately. So four two. That's it. One new, no you, no used. Five one is for the defective. Three one is for the new. Divided by twelve. So we're calculating all of these together. Similarly, uh, two new and no used, and one new and one used. so i have these uh, six possible combinations why not the other one because it adds up to three i can't have one here and two here or two here all of these add up to less than or equal to two all these scenarios are now modeled and i have the joint probability distribution because the permutation is giving me uh, the number of possible ways in which i can do that and because i'm dividing by 12 2 so that becomes a probability The reason I am dividing by twelve two is that I want to convert that to a probability. Otherwise, it's just going to give me the number of possible ways in which you can select it. So by dividing by twelve two, I convert that to a probability. Probability यही होती है ना कि total divided by है probability क्या होती है favorable outcomes divided by total number of possible outcomes. So that's the one. मैं अब I was मैं mean का formula लगा रहा था. Find e x बताए भाई हाउ विल यू फाइंड ई ऑफ एक्स एक्स इज दिस नंबर ऑफ न्यू चूज एंड शावश मार्जिनल निकाल के कैसे निकालेंगे हाउ क्या ऐड करेंगे रो वाइज ऐड करेंगे कॉलम वाइज कॉलम वाइज विल एड इट ठीक है सो विल हैव अ मार्जिनल हेयर व्हिच इज 36 ओवर 66 Here I have twenty-seven over sixty-six. Here I have three over sixty-six. Multiplied by zero, multiplied by one, multiplied by two. That becomes the expected value of x. Right? 
जी सिक्स पॉसिबल केसेस हैं ये है ना ये वाला बिकॉज अच्छे से भी वेन एवर लुक वी वी आर जस्ट इंटरेस्टेड इन न्यू एंड ओल्ड बट द पॉइंट इज के इफ आई एम जस्ट यूजिंग वन न्यू मैंने उठाया वन न्यू था आई जस्ट से वन न्यू दैट इट देर इज नो यूज देन दैट हैज टू बी डिफेक्टिव दर वन So I have to pick two. So I am I am modeling six different scenarios in which I can pick up the two balls. That's it. Because it is already there, na. If it if it was not there, if 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 it was not there, then it would have been pretty simple. वो तो इसलिए कर रहे हैं क्योंकि it is part of the whole uh, offering जो कि आपके पास है. The balls are inside along with the other ones, and I am selecting randomly without looking. So if I select two, so one of them is the used one; the other has to be defective if it is not new. But I am only interested in modeling the new and old ones. So in these six, I have modeled all possible scenarios for selecting the old and new ones. That's it. For that, I have to come accompany the defective ones also to complete my permutation. Because if if I say that it is possible that I select one defective and one new, and one defective and one used, so I have to model that scenario as well. The problem is given like this, na. So we have to be. It is being summed up across both the use cases. अगर एक defective है तो उसमें भी अगर एक new है, दूसरा defective हो गया. अगर एक used है दूसरा defective हो गया. So उसका जो overall effect है वो neutralize हो रहा है. It's not biasing of my estimate in any way. Okay. But the point is because I'm given the balls, so. It is possible that uh, I only I only select one used and one defective, or one new or one defective, or both new or both uh, both used. So I have modeled all the scenarios. It is possible that I also select both defective, which is the first use case we have done. Okay. So this is pretty much modeled, or uh, it means that I have selected both defective balls. you have to model different scenarios that's it whenever you are given such a problem you have to see that what are the possible values of x and y even if you miss one of them then don't worry about the marks this is not a linear algebra course or you know first semester foundation maths course ke jisme aapko is pe i just check the concept that's it if you are not able to visualize all the use cases it's it's fine theek okay? hai Joint probability density function. Uh, this is for the continuous case. So you model it like this. Uh, so yeah, so it has to be greater than equal to zero. And yeah, you know that even in the case for the uh, continuous uh, PDF, I take the integral over the density function. So in this case, I have to take two integrals. Why? Because we have two variables. So one is moving in this direction other is moving in this direction so i have to take this but uh, whatever the case overall the sum should always be one and this is for one specific region of the space that you want to see so when you are talking of a joint pdf then you have to visualize a graph across two dimension at least and usme fir hum regions ko select karte hain for example um, let's say we have this uh, yeah this one so i can i can ask a question so what is the probability that x lies in the range minus 1 to 2 and y lies in the range 0 to 2 right so 0 to 2 why i am crossing something here and this i am cross uh, sorry bro. this i am crossing here so this is becomes my area of interest so this is what i have to integrate over ha ah, volume sir yes. is right because uh, this is this represents the volume volume kaing is bilkul yeah so 
this part of the PDF becomes important to me. Okay, so that's what uh, that's what the integral is going to give you. So just uh, visualize this. Right. So, um, for example, here you can see that I am doing something very strange. I have an X moving in this direction. I have a Y which is going inside the screen. Okay, and uh, I have an X which follows the normal distribution. Gaussian. X is a variable which follows the normal distribution. For example, the customer age or the sales. And the variable Y is also following the normal distribution. So it's a इसको हम कहते हैं गॉजियन मिक्सचर बट वे गोट बी टचिंग दैट अगर आज आप लोगों की हिम्मत होती है राइट एट दी एंड तो वेन आई हैव टू और मोर देन टू गॉजियन टूगेदर इन वन यूनिक प्रॉब्लम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट्स कॉल्ड गॉजियन मिक्सचर सो दैट्स अ बिट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड कॉन्सेप्ट बट हमारे ट्रेनिंग डेटा में यही हो रहा होता है आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट मशीन लर्निंग नॉट डीप लर्निंग इन इन मशीन लर्निंग सैनैरियोज आई एम हैविंग अ गॉजियन मिक्सचर Uh, across the numerical variables, ठीक है ना और उसको फिर मॉडल करना देखना कि उसकी क्या स्टैटिस्टिक्स हैं वट आर दैरामीटर्स ऑफ दैट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट समटाइम्स दैट वुड बी इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर योर मशीन लर्निंग वर्क और डेटा रेंगलिंग वर्क आई डोंट नो राइट सो दिस नोमेरिकल इज अ बिट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड यू नीड टू कंसनट्रेट एन आर्टिकल वी आर डिस्कसिंग द मूवमेंट ऑफ अ पार्टिकल आर्टिकल पार्टिकल सो इट्स अ पोइम एज वेल ठीक है एज्यूम दैट अ पार्टिकल मूव्स विद इन द रीजन ए बाउंडेड बाय द एक्स एक्सिस सो बाउंडेड का तो मतलब पता है ना आपको कि बाउंड मींस अ पैरामीटर सो इट कांट इट कांट मूव बियॉन्ड दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट सही है सो लेट्स ड्रॉ द एक्स एक्सिस सो देयर इज सम रीजन ए व्हिच इज अबव द एक्स एक्सिस लेट्स लेट्स एज्यूम इट कुड बी बिलो एज वेल बाउंड मींस के uh the region is defined with respect to the x axis that's what the bound means okay uh particularly the line x equals to 1 so i'm talking about the line x equals to 1 theek okay. hai so this is x equals to 1 and the line y equals to x and the line y equals to x so if this is the origin then i have the line something like this so these are the bounds this is not the pdf i have drawn the bounding lines which are supposed to come on the pdf do you understand abhi to i am just drawing the parameters jaise i showed you the normal curve on the plot uh, so i draw the lines one like this one like this as it becomes a region of interest theek okay? hai so this is just the bounding line the pdf of x and y is defined by this function 8xy for all these pairs which are within the region a so i assume a function 8xy which you can plot and see how it looks like okay and on that 8xy plot i have to draw the line x equals to 1 and y equals to x okay and that particular region which crosses that these two lines becomes the area of my interest that's a it's just an area of interest so um, for example we can have something like this just uh, don't get don't get bogged down uh, uh, talking about why it is Uh, this is a pretty complicated. So this is a joint PDF. Okay. Any you can have any sum of it as a joint PDF. Eight x square, eight x square plus nine x square, whatever. It could be joint between x and y. X and y are two random variables. They are not actual. In fact, they are two random variables. Right. So their values are varying here. Their values are varying there. So this is a joint PDF. Define the probability group. Now, when I am going to Uh, a complicated uh, PDF like this. So it makes sense to we are we are not interested in the whole continuous PDF never. 
like in the case of normal distribution also in one test for only particular interval so here also i can define interval to define the interval i define the bound so and pretty i think yes can the bound define the interval so i can say okay as a eight line this is the bound by line number 5 this is the bound line number 2 this is the bound line number 3 this is the bound line number 4 okay so what becomes the area of interest is this this part of the pdf becomes by area of interest that's it so you just uh, you just need to keep in mind that whenever we have a joint pdf in such a simple function as 8xy it has a shape and we define certain parts of that area through certain bounds like x equals to 1 y equals to 2 x equals to 3 x varies from 3 to 4 y varies from 4 to 5 now integrate over that as simple as that so in the case on the pure uh, univariate continuous we define two numbers k okay, 1 to 2 or 3 to 4 find out the probability in this case we have to define lines because we are talking about two random variables that's it okay so for those who are online i just told ke uh basa whenever you have random variables like x1 and x2 so you always have some joint pdf shape and uh, in order to integrate or find out the probability we are not interested in the whole curve we are always interested in some part of the curve to define the part of the curve i can define certain bounds like this the lines you know all these things so i am interested in particular areas only that's all you need to know okay. so now the question is graphically show the region in the xy plane what does that mean xy plane that means or in the curve at xy where the joint is non zero joint non zero kahan par hoga where will be the joint non zero ye likha hua hai iske andar is the region a in which it is non zero the region a is of our interest so on the curve 8xy i define the line s equals to 1 and the line y equals to x and then see where they intersect on that particular curve and that is the region where it is non zero so that's as simple as that so let's see how that happens so this is uh, do you think this is the curve 8xy yeah it does seem so theek hai so how will we say uh, y equals to x y equals to x line kaisi jayegi let me make a more bright color yaar it's already so bright white se kar le so it's something like this y equals to x even a child could do better and x equals to 1 like this so it's intersecting somewhere here this could be the region a which is of our interest obviously ye i mean this is not something which you guys need to yaad karna hai as just understand the concept okay so i think if they have uh, given the answer in fact so it's something like this this is in fact the surface 8xy which they have plotted and they have drawn this line Uh, they have not shown x equals to one here, so I don't know okay how this happens. the The point is that the PDF is defined over only the region A for us. So that particular point in which x equals to one is intersecting with y equals to x, only that is our PDF. Other than that, we are not concerned with the PDF function. So yeah, so that's the remember. This is the conceptual part. Now we come to this. how do we calculate this find the uh, this is a joint question right this is a joint pdf question ha uh, double integrated hmm huh? acha white kya ho yaar kya hai so double integrate double kyun karna hai volume सर क्योंकि एक्स और वाई दोनों के अक्रॉस है ना हाँ तो व्हाट है बट विल राइट हेयर 
Sir, the function uh, with respect to x. Sir, इसको पहले है. Dy dx. Yes, इसको हम integrate करेंगे with respect to x and then y. You can take any dy dx or dx dy. Typically, our tendency is to take x first. It does not should not make any difference. But uh, so, what should I put here? Huh? Exactly. Point five to one and zero to point five. I should have brought this. Right. Now what? ये तो क्लास सिक्स का बच्चा भी कर सकता है क्लास सेवन का बच्चा कर सकता है सर मैं बताऊं जी सोहा बताइए सर सो एट एक्स स्क्वायर बाय ओवर टू ये पहले हमने क्या इंटीग्रेट किया है विद एक्स इफ यू इंटीग्रेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एस तो एट एक्स स्क्वायर ओवर टू एक्स का इंटीग्रल क्या होता है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एस एक because y is part of the constant 4x square y uh integrate uh, over 0.5 to 1 dy i have not touched dy as yet why should i touch y i am integrating with respect to x y is a constant so y will remain so this is this will become what this term will become what uh 4y minus uh 0.5 squared 0.2 by 4 1 4y minus y 3y theek hai theek hai clear hai na 3y dy and this will be equal to 3 y square over 2 0.5 0.5 so that becomes what 0.5 square is 0.25 0.25 into 1.5 how much 0.375 that becomes the probability so x is taking on value dekhen isne kaha tha ki x equals to 1 is the bound and i am coming x equals to 1 is this line y equals to x is this line so that means i can take value y uh, sorry x between 0 and 1 right is the thing say samajh aa rahi na kyunki mai bound by se aur y ki value kya aa rahi hai 0 to 0.5 that is also good because i am still in that particular range so this is part of the a region and the probability of uh, getting these two is 0.375 ditto for these use cases you can calculate yourself and you know just do a bit hands on maybe some of them will come out to be zero if uh, but x i think is within the range here it's within the range here uh, i think i don't think so they will come out to be zero maybe they will be equal in some place sahi hai this is angle so if x and y are continuous random variables then we are now talking about the marginal density functions which we have already seen right marginal humne discrete ka to kar liya tha na that was a like x to cd covers ka humne add kiya tha so if we want to do a marginal across the continuous then you have to integrate across all the other values of the uh, variable the dusre random variable ki sari values ke cross aapko integrate karna hoga so if you are talking about x then you have to integrate across all the values of y you talking about marginal for y then you have to integrate across all the values of x okay right? uh and yeah so that's uh, so mean from a joint distribution what does that mean does this make sense expected value अच्छा हाँ दिस इज द केस फॉर दी आई थिंक यूनिवेरिएट हाँ दिस इज द यूनिवेरिएट केस 
and this is the joint case. So if I'm talking about EX, then I have to definitely uh, X into all possible values of this, but it should be Y, right? I have to integrate over all possible values of Y. Huh? अच्छा 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 ठीक है ठीक है बट आई हैव टू अच्छा दिस दिस इज द थिंग ठीक है सो आई एम इंटीग्रेटिंग ओवर ऑल दी पॉसिबल वैल्यूज ऑफ वाई ठीक है ठीक है देन आई एम गेटिंग द डी एक्स हाँ अच्छा सो एक्स डी एक्स तो ये एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू है ना तो वैल्यू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई इट्स प्रॉबिलिटी विच कैन ओनली बी कैलकुलेटेड थ्रू दी इंटीग्रल सही है सही है ठीक है so variance uh, variance ka bhi formula tha jo ke variance can be calculated based on the expected value i gave the formula in one of the previous lectures so don't worry about calculate variance separately in this case e calculate kar le and then just calculate from that theek okay? uh, hai so it's the same case so sahi hai to is should you take a break abhi acha bhi time hai just thoda uh, sa so this is pretty clear this is the conditional this is the joint this is the marginal theek hai ye bas aap yaad rakhein so this is what they have formalism unhone bata diya they have formulated like this i will not prefer this difficult notation you can you can make your own notation for the joint and the conditional and this uh, marginal um the conditional can be stated as the joint over the marginal divided by the marginal okay that's uh, pretty simple so continuing the plastic covers now we are just making a bit more complicated um find the probability that a cd cover has a length of 130 mm given that the width is 15 mm so i have X equals thirty given y equals to fifteen equals to joint of these two divided by probability of y equals to fifteen which is the marginal. Okay, so the joint of only these two, not the whole joint. कि मैं आपसे पूछ रहा हूँ कि क्या probability है कि length one thirty होगी given that the width of the CD cover is fifteen. So first I find out कि what's the Joint in this case, one thirty fifteen का joint क्या है? Zero point four two divided by the marginal for fifteen, which is zero point six. So the probability is seventy percent. Conditional probability seventy percent. Okay. Similarly, you can calculate these conditional probabilities one twenty nine, one thirty, one thirty one. So it's point one two divided by this, divided by this, divided by this. The same. Okay. Uh, so once you are given y equals to fifteen, you are in a different space altogether. Okay. The sum of, ha, ye ek baat hai. Now we need this. If I am taking conditional with respect to one, that's a conditional as to y equals to fifteen uh, for all three. Point two, point seven, point one. So. All the conditionals for a particular condition should sum up to one. Hey, if I am saying that my condition is that the width of the cover is fifteen centimeter or millimeter, whatever, okay. So all possible conditionals in which I can apply this condition should sum up to one. After all, it's a probability, right? So this is not true for the marginal case. अब लेट सी द मार्जिनल जो कि हमने कैलकुलेट की थी या सो मार्जिनल फॉर वन पर्टिकुलर वेरिएबल द मार्जिन ऑल्सो सम अप टू वन लाइक इन दिस पॉइंट सिक्स पॉइंट फोर दिस इज द मार्जिनल फॉर द विथ एंड पॉइंट टू पॉइंट सेवन पॉइंट वन दिस इज द मार्जिनल फॉर देंथ दिस इज समिंग अप टू वन दिस इज समिंग अप टू वन सिमिलरली फॉर द कंडीशनल If I am saying something with respect conditioned on width fifteen, so I can condition on width fifteen based on one twenty nine, one thirty, one thirty one. 
So the condition probability of these three should sum up to one. ये भी प्लीज इसको याद रखिएगा बात को ठीक है और सम ऑफ सम फॉर्मुलिज्म बिकॉज इट्स अ प्रोबेबिलिटी इट्स ऑलवेज सम्स अप टू वन दैट्स व्हाट वी डिस्कस राइट नाउ इट शुड बी ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू 0 एंड दिस इज हाउ यू कैन फॉर्मुलेट फॉर द कंटीन्यूअस केस अगेन द सेम थिंग यू हैव टू डिफरेंशिएट सॉरी इंटीग्रेट एंड हियर यू हैव टू स्पेसिफाई द रेंज सो वी डोंट नीड टू बी थर्ड वन को इतना याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है Uh, ये थोड़ा सा बस थोड़ा सा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है कंडीशनल मीन दैट्स दी कंडीशनल एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू सो इसमें सिंपली फर्स्ट वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग बाय दी जॉइंट प्रोबेबिलिटी नाउ वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग बाय द कंडीशनल प्रोबेबिलिटी सो वाई इनटू एफ ऑफ वाई गिवन एक्स रिप्रेजेंटिंग इट बाय दिस दैट्स कॉल्ड द कंडीशनल मीन एंड द कंडीशनल वेरियंस सो आई थिंक वी हैव अ सिंपल फॉर्मूला फॉर द कंडीशनल वेरियंस ये भी आप लोग करेंगे ना ये आ, क्या यार कंफ्यूज हो गए ऑनलाइन समझ में आ रहा है बच्चों को यू अंडरस्टैंड सर ये वाली चीज नहीं समझ आ रही अच्छी बात है आप और इसको थोड़ा सा सोचें आपको समझ में आ जाएगा इंशाल्लाह तला the conditional mean of y given x uh, denoted as this should be what in this case um, y given x so all possible values of y multiplied by the conditional probability sir it's something sir. like this k this formula should be x again Y one into conditional uh, probability of Y one given X plus Y two conditional probability of Y two given X because the condition has to remain the same if I am finding out the expected value. वही marginal वाला use case है, ठीक है? So all possible values of Y you sum up across those and that becomes your conditional mean. And similarly, you can calculate the conditional variance. What's the formula for variance? Value minus uh, value minus the mean squared. That's it. Ah, uh, divided by n minus one. So here they have not divided by n minus one. नहीं normalize तो करना चाहिए ना फिर भी. हम्म hmm. अच्छा ठीक है तो इस केस में आई एम सब्रैक्टिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई फ्रॉम द कंडीशनल मीन तो इफ यू वांट टू फाइंड आउट द कंडीशनल वेरिएंस फर्स्ट यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द कंडीशनल मीन नॉट द सैंपल मीन आसान है यार ये बहुत बच्चों वाला कॉन्सेप्ट है इट्स नॉट डिफिकल्ट एट ऑल ठीक है हाँ ये वही है दिस दिस इज द डेविएशन फ्रॉम द मीन सिंपली वाई वन माइनस द डेविएशन फ्रॉम द मीन प्लस वाई टू माइनस बट वाई वी मल्टीप्लाई दिस बाय एफ वाई गिवन एक्स द प्रोबेबिलिटी हाँ थिंग वी डू नॉट डू दिस इन द नॉर्मल केस राइट हाँ so please pay attention ke in the case of the conditional variance it is not simply the value minus the condition mean square on the contrary we are multiplying that by the conditional probability of that particular scenario as well the for example yahan par ho jayega y1 minus conditional mean whole square multiplied by probability of y1 given x plus y2 minus conditional mean whole squared a multiplied by probability of y2 given x so there are just two formulas you need to remember so conditional mean way you multiply the value of y uh, by the conditional probability and sum up across all the y's 
and then you use that conditional mean to find out the conditional variance for that uh, find out the deviation of each y value from the conditional mean square that and multiply by the conditional probability of that given y value sahi hai so iski practice karni padegi to i'll try to give you some numericals chale shabash break le le then we take a namaz a strike of okay, the let's take a namaz break okay and a chai coffee break okay guys online just break for like 10 to 15 minutes okay, okay so quickly please uh, how to solve this jaldi jaldi bataye why given x equals to 129 how to solve this first you find out the conditional mean how do we find that out ha what are those values of y given x equals to 129 15 and 16 15 and 16 right so what is the probability y equals to 15 uh given x equals to 129 what's this probability hey conditional probability not the joint that's the joint probability which you are talking talking about the conditional probability is calculated from the formula uska joint divided by the marginal the joint in this case what is the joint yeah 0.12 divided by the marginal of marginal of what 129 129 that's 0.2 that's 0.2 yes that's 0.2 so it becomes 0.12 divided by 0.2 okay that is the condition probability only for this 15 then we find out the condition probability for 16 as well points yeah 0.08 divided by 0.2 that's good that's good and then we find out the expected value of this in this case expected value is the conditional mean okay which becomes what 15 multiplied by 0.12 divided by 0.2 plus 16 multiplied by 0.08 divided by 0.2 okay so that becomes the conditional uh, this value and then how do you find the the variance of the same you have the conditional mean now right is we have the conditional mean so uh 15 minus the conditional mean whole squared multiplied by 0.12 divided by 0.2 okay plus 16 minus the conditional mean whole squared multiplied by 0.08 divided by 0.2 that becomes the conditional variance or whatever so now we have a few things up our sleeves a uh, joint pdf which could be either a continuous pdf or a discrete pdf probability mass function we also have the concept of a uh, marginal probability which can be calculated from the joint and the conditional the marginal across one variable should sum up to one and uh, as same for the other variable in this way the conditionals for one given condition should all sum up to one either across the first variable or the other variable okay to find out the conditional mean or the expected uh, expected value of the conditional probability distribution you have to multiply the value by the conditional probability and to find out the conditional variance 
you have to subtract the value from the condition mean squared multiplied by the conditional probability. These are a few concepts related to joint PDF and all these things. Okay. So yeah, clear. So just uh, just remember this main formula. If you keep this in your mind, then everything will be fine. Conditional equal to uh, joint over modulus. This is important because this is very important uh, in machine learning. Conditional probabilities, uh, when we start the Bayesian stats, Bayesian maths and Bayesian algorithms, it's all about conditional probabilities. So you need to understand the concepts very clearly right now. Abhi to humne sahi kaam shuru kiya bhi nahi hai. Uh, so we already did this. Ah, yeah. This is something which is really good. Suppose X, Y has a PDF X plus Y. What is the range of Y and X? This is the bound. This is the bound. I told you there is always a bound. X can vary between zero and one, and Y can vary between zero and one. And the shape of the curve is X plus Y. Yeah, this is in front of you. Okay, what is the question? Go back a slide. Okay. Uh, so now the question here is find f of y given x. Yeah, this is the joint shape. This is the shape of the joint PDF. X plus Y. So pretty simple, like eight X Y. जो हमने देखा था, ठीक है? क्या पूछ रहे हैं? Conditional probability निकालनी है. Sorry, I will make my own formalism. Y given X. चलो, that's it. I have to uh, Y given X. How do I do that? Huh? Uh, I have to calculate the integral, right? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Joint divided by marginal. Hey, so, joint is x plus y then. Joint is x plus y. That's good. Divided by marginal with respect to x. So I have to integrate x plus y with respect to y. With respect to y. To find out over x. Okay? So integrate. Or uh, here terms can be 0 to 1 because that's the range for x and y. Do you understand what's happening here? Uh, uh, the, the question is to uh, is to calculate probability of y given x. So that's the conditional probability. We we saw the conditional equals to joint divided by marginal. Where marginal is with respect to x. If the conditional is with respect to x. So joint have already the what's the joint? X plus y. So I put x plus y here in the numerator divided by the margin. Marginal I have to integrate now because I'm given in a function. It's not a discrete case. So I have to integrate X plus Y with respect to what? 
with respect to dy because i have to integrate over all possible y to find out the marginal for x i have to find out the marginal with respect to x so i have to integrate over all possible y okay so i will write here d dy now x plus y dy becomes what बिल्कुल सही एक्स वाई प्लस वाई स्क्वे ओवर टू एंड वेन आई डू इट विद वन एंड जीरो बिकॉज मैंने ये आई हैव टू ट्राई अप्लाई दिस राइट वन एंड जीरो सो एक्स प्लस वाई ओवर एक्स प्लस दावश ये कमॉल मैन हाँ खत्म दैट्स इट that is the condition finish that is the answer to this sahi hai that is the formula for the conditional probability that so just know just know the basic integration that's it sir no 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 because the the joint pdf is already given we don't have to integrate that it unhone to pura function aapko de diya hai We don't need to integrate that. Ha, marginal nikalne ke liye I have to integrate over the joint. Because marginal, I have to integrate over the other variable across all its possible values. So just yeah, just remember one thing: that when I have the y given x here, then in the denominator, the marginal will be with respect to x. जो conditional होगा वो यहाँ पे marginal आएगा. ठीक है, just remember this. सही है, clear? सर जी सर हमने यहाँ पे मार्जिनल को इंटीग्रेट क्यों किया इंटीग्रेशन क्यों निकाली है हमने ये बात नहीं समझ में आ रही है मुझे असल में क्लास में अगर आना हो ना तो समझ में आसानी से आ जाएगी इसलिए निकाला है क्योंकि दिस फंक्शन एक्स प्लस वाई इज दॉइंट पी डी एफ राइट ज्वाइंट पी डी एफ मीन के इट इज फॉर बोथ एक्स एंड वाई वेरिएबल्स टूगेदर If I have marginal का मतलब ये होता है कि you are just finding over one possible variable, okay? So whenever I take a marginal, I have to sum up over the values of all the other variable. So if I have to find out the marginal p x, then I have to sum up the joint over all possible values of y. If I have to find the marginal p y, I have to sum up the marginal over all possible values of x. That's the basic concept. ठीक है क्लियर है नहीं सर क्या क्लियर नहीं है व्हाट्स नॉट क्लियर सर कंडीशनल प्रोबेबिलिटी की अगर हम बात कर रहे हैं तो उसमें जैसे आप पीछे बता रहे थे कि हम जो है वो इक्वल होता है आपके पास जॉइंट प्रोबेबिलिटी डिवाइड बाय सिंपल आपका मार्जिनल प्रोबेबिलिटी जी वही तो, यही फॉर्मूला लगाया है तो ये नीचे हम इंटीग्रेट क्यों कर रहे हैं वो बात दि, मुझे नहीं समझ में आ रही हाउ विल यू फाइंड द मार्जिनल फ्रॉम दिस I have to find out the marginal with respect to x. How can I find out the marginal given this function? What is the answer? The only answer is to integrate. When I have a continuous probability density function, then I have to integrate to find out the probability. There is no other solution. आप बताएं कि आप marginal there is no table given to us, right? There are only ranges given to us. So in this case, I have no other solution than to integrate. सही है सही थैंक यू सो द अदर थिंग इज अ बिट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड शो दैट व्हेन आई सम अप ऑल द कंडीशनल्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई इज दैट ट्रू या दैट्स दिस वन दिस वन दिस वन सो ऑल दीज व्हेन आई सम अप ऑल द कंडीशनल्स uh yeah so this is true right we told k for a given condition for a given condition all possible conditionals will sum up to one given the same condition so in this i am given the same condition which is x so how can we show this मैं रिकॉर्डिंग पॉज कर
So those who are online, uh, the value of this is x plus y over x plus half. When you integrate this from zero to one with respect to dy, because that's what we were asked to do here, I removed these limits because uh, we are given the limits of y as zero and one only. So we can't have minus infinity to infinity because that's not our range. There's always a range. So when you integrate this, so this will evaluate to one. Just take this x plus half outside the integral and then integrate uh, from zero to one, uh, which is x plus y. Uh, dy. So this will become xy plus y square over two put in one and zero. So this will evaluate to one. Okay. So these kind of things, you know, just develop your concepts regarding the conditional probability. What is the condition mean of y given x equals to 0.5? Uh, what about this one? Probability of y given x equals to 0.5. Uh, sorry, expected value. So expected value of y, uh, what are the possible values which y can take given x equals 2.5? I have to integrate. Hey na? What is the function? But how can I find out the expected value? Kyunki mujhe, how, I don't have knowledge of the individual values. Area under the curve. Nee, nee, that's not the expected value. Integral is the probability. Or should we take from 0 to 1 at the end points? Huh? So, no. No, 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 no. What is the joint? So, in this case, the joint is x plus y over the marginal, which is x plus, oh, we already calculated this. So if x is 0.5, then this is y plus 0.5 over, over 1, right? So y plus 0.5, this becomes the conditional probability, right? So then what? Conditional probability multiplied by what? Y into 0.5? Why? No, no, no. This is the conditional probability. This is the conditional probability, right? If I have to find out the conditional mean, I have to multiply this probability by the value. But what is the value? I think if y, y plus 0.5, just uh, give this answer, that will be okay then. Integrate kya? Integrate to kar liya. Integrate kar ke to ye conditional aya hai. This is the answer for the condition which we calculate in part A. This comes after integration. Now what? So, up can integrate karna hai. Expected value, mein, we don't need the integration. Haan. Let me check the uh, O. Oh. Yes, they are summing up here. Yeah, they are summing up here, right? Yeah, pe, achha, ye discrete ke case mein sum kar rahe aur, uh, continuous ke case mein we have to take the integral. So, but what is the integral? Huh? So, uh, okay, so, hai. so I integrate y plus 0.5 with respect to dy over 0 to 1. Okay. That becomes the conditional mean. Y bhi aega. Uh, y into y plus 0.5. Okay. So this is the probability. This is the value. Okay. Uh, if anyone of you does that, that's the... Because the expected value is the value multiplied by the probability. Expected value ka ye formula. Value multiplied by the probability. So 
In the case of conditional, it is the value multiplied by the conditional probability. So conditional probability is 0.5 plus y, which we saw right now. In fact, this is solved here. So this is what we got, right? This is the conditional, which we got. And when we put in x equals to 0.5, we have 0.5 plus y, and this is good. Say ka aap logo This is good. Yehi karna hai. 0.5 plus y into y dy equals to 7 over 12. Say it. Because uh, uh, I am finding out the expected value of y, na, so I have to multiply the conditional by its value. Expected value ko formula kya hota hai? The value multiplied by the probability. So that's why I'm, we have to put in y there. Okay. So this is okay. Not that complicated. It will be easy, don't worry. And if you're not able to do it, then that means ke tayari nahi ki. Probably what will happen is ke I will give one question from the discrete case and one question from the continuous case so that dono cheeze aapki test ho jayen. But this is, you just need to know how to integrate y with respect to dy. And you just need to understand the concepts of the condition and marginal. That's very important because that's that's what you're gonna be, uh, um, yes, you're gonna be experiencing that throughout the course. So you have to understand these concepts very clearly. That's why I'm uh, spending so much time. I'll give you several practice sheets before the hourly. As Jitna Karneo Kali Jaga. What is independence? Yeah, when two events have they have no, you know, they are mutually independent. Or independent or exclusive? Exclusive? Mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive are always independent. Intersection nahi hota. So, so uh, f of y given x equals to f of y. It, it has nothing to do with x. Okay, so it is simply that. So just remember this formula. So this is the case, okay, if two very random variables are independent, then their probabilities get multiplied. That's it. Like a rolling of a dice and raining outside, no, uh, no correlation, can't take conditional. So multiply uh, rolling of a dice multiplied by rain, that's the probability of two events happening together. If I do the conditional, it does not make any difference. It remains the same. The probability of y given f, x equals to probability of y. Probability of x given y equals to probability of x. Conditional makes no difference, okay? What about this formula? Uh, conditional equals to joint over marginal. What happens to this one? Yeah, joint will be, yeah, the, uh, a, ki baat hai, a given B, the joint means that they are independent, so I have to multiply their probabilities. Hai? So probability of A multiplied by probability of B divided by probability of B. Obviously, these two terms will cancel and it's the same thing that the slide mein likha tha. Uh, the, the conditional makes no difference to us. So probability of A given B equals to probability of A. It, this comes from the formula, okay? So it's a, it's a simple thing. So now, the same battery example that we calculated. Without doing any calculations, can you tell whether X and Y are independent? Without doing any calculations, can you tell whether X and Y are independent? Uh, how will you do that? The joint equals to probability of, if I say, Huh. So for this, I have to calculate the marginal probabilities and then I will be able to answer it. You understand? So let's do it. So what's the marginal here? Uh, 
uh, 25 and 3, 28 over 66. What about this one? 32 over 66. And this is 6 over 66, right? What about this? 36, 27. And three. So, if it was a independent distribution, then what does that mean? The joint equals to the joint of two equals to probability of one multiplied by probability of marginal of one multiplied by the margin of the other. So, ten over sixty-six is the joint. This should be equal to y zero, which is twenty-eight over sixty-six. Multiplied by x zero, which is thirty-six or sixty-six, but it is not. It's not equal to that, right? So therefore, they are not independent. Ah, huh, मतलब is यार इसने तो कहा है without doing any calculations. Hmm. Yeah, we are replacing. That's why, without replacement. Ah, uh, say, क्या रहेंगे? If I was it, तो मैं तो इस तरह करके दिखा देता बारल. Um, now tell here, R X and Y independent. R X and Y independent. Very easy. Yes, sir. Because point zero eight equals to point one into point eight. Marginal. If I if I multiply the marginals, if they are independent. Point two equals to point one into point two. Ha. Point seven two equals to point nine into point eight, and point one eight equals to point two into point nine. So yes, they are independent because the joint equals to the multiplication of marginals. That's it. Say it. That's what we like, just understand the concept. Okay. If two random variables are independent, then their joint probability is the multiplication of their individual marginal probabilities. Probability of x comma y equals to probability of x multiplied by probability of y. That's the that's the condition for independence. Right? You multiply the probabilities, the marginals. So in this case, 0.08 equals to 0.1 into 0.8, which are the marginals in this case, right? 0.02 equals to 0.1 into 0.2. 0.72 equals to 0.8 into 0.9. 0.18 equals to 0.2 into 0.9. Okay, so that's the we don't need. Uh, we have done all this. Uh, I have. Oof! What about this one? Thus, probability of y given x equals to probability of y for all x and y should be because the uh, that's the formula, right? Ah, uh, independence. The formula me kya hota hai ki probability of y given x equals to probability of y. So x does not make a difference. So it should be true, yeah. And this is also true. The second one condition is also true. That's the formula, right? Whenever you the joint, that's the individual. Uh, multiplication probabilities. Uh, it's the same thing. ये भी वही सवाल है. Oh ho, चलें ये आपके आखरी है. Length of two dimensions of a machine part, x and y independent and measured in millimeters. We are given independence here, so both of these are independent. What does this mean? N ten point five point double zero two five. Yeah, mean and variance of a 
normal distribution. So that's the, you are given the density because to define a normal curve, you just need these two values. Okay. So now what? Yeah, we have to in name. Yeah, yeah, Bilkul. You have to find, uh, because uh, there are two different probability distributions, right? Both are Gaussian. So for the case of X, we put this range, calculate the probability uh, for the distribution of Y. This is why Python help you. Python, the, the APIs, SciPy API will tell you, ke, what is the probability of this distribution over this range? It's going to give you the answer for that. So just uh, do that and then multiply the two properties together because they're independent. So remember, this is a Gaussian mixture. This is a Gaussian mixture, basically. Okay. Why vary it? Okay. Is that clear? Uh, what time is it? So variance, uh, you, all of you know, right? Uh, variance is uh, simply the uh, spread of data around its mean value. So, what about the standard deviation? Standard deviation and variance, what's the difference? The square root, that's it. The square root of variance is standard deviation. Covariance refers to the measure of the directional relationship between the two random variables. What it means is that the greater, larger values of one random variable should output large values of the other random variable. That And small values of one random variable should output small values of the other random variable. So then that means that's a positive covariance. If it is the other way around, okay, you are increasing the values on one random variable and the other ones are decreasing, or you are decreasing the values of one random variable and the other ones are increasing, then that's a negative covariance. Proportionality of spread, you can call it like that. Okay, so do you understand this? So this is called the uh, joint variability and the measure of the directional relationship. You need to think like this. If I increase the one variable on the one random variable on the number line, what happens to the other one? If I increase the other random variable on the number line, what happens to the other one? So, yeah, so the basic concept is covariance. In machine learning, we use correlation. So we have to see what's the difference between covariance and correlation. Okay. So in uh, the case of investments and uh, financial markets, variance is used by experts to measure an asset's volatility. How much is deviates from a mean behavior? Asset ki price, se, mean price, se kitna deviate ka, that's a variance. While covariance describes two different investment returns. So I made two different investments and I want to compare whether my investments both are, in, are returning me in the same Proportion or not, if the if the return of one investment is is good, is going good, what about the return of the other one? So the then that's a negative covariance. So I I might be make, interested in making these sort of comparisons. Okay. So this is the formula. Uh yeah, so you can you can uh, calculate that based on the uh, you know you just have you just need to use python for this i i don't think so i'll ask you to calculate the covariance if it is so just bring the formula with you bring the formula sheet with you though covariance ka koi itna problem nahi hai. again you can see ke i can calculate the covariance based on the expected value the expected value is something which is really useful and you need to remember those concepts which I told you, the central limit theorem. If you repeat 
an experiment a large number of times. So even though the original data does not follow the normal distribution, but the mean of that data or the average of that data will converge will occur to a normal distribution. So we use that concept quite a lot in many applications of uh, engineering and science. So remember the central limit theorem specifically. I have also uploaded one lab. So you can see how that is. So yeah, is this in clear covariance? <coughs> uh, so the sign of the covariance shows the tendency in the linear relationship. If one is increasing, so other is increasing, so positive. If one is increasing, other is decreasing negative. So that's a linear relationship. We can't go more than that. But the magnitude of the covariance is not easy to interpret because it is not normalized. So this thing is not normalized with respect to the standard deviations. You always, you always standardize a number with respect to some parameter. Just say, I told you about the Z distribution, right? What is the Z distribution? It's a standard normal distribution, which is used for standardizing your data so that it can be compared. I can compare different columns with each other, right? So the same way for covariance, it's easy to say a positive covariance, negative covariance, but the point is that covariance does not have any, uh, I can't make interpretation about its magnitude. It has no range in which I can interpret a magnitude. Uh, let's say I take the height of people from Africa and height of people from Pakistan and I make a covariance of African and covariance of Pakistanis. So their heights are way more than our heights. So the comparison will not be that much. Unki covariance ho sakta hai, zyada aja hai. Hamari covariance kam aja hai, phir bhi positive ho. But if I take the correlation of both the countries, then it becomes comparable because correlation maps it into one range, zero and one, zero to one. It's like a standard normal case. Ah, sorry, minus one to one, minus one to one. So the, co the correlation uh, is simply covariance divided by the uh, standard deviation multiplications. It's just a normalizing factor here. It's actually the covariance, but I have normalized that. So we use this correlation more than the covariance. But you should know what is covariance. It's, uh, it's not good to show anybody graphs of correlation without understanding it's actually covariance that I'm looking at, standardized covariance. You need to understand the concept again. So it's, it's simply, uh, called the correlation coefficient, which is also called the <clears throat> Pearson correlation coefficient. In most cases, we almost always we use the Pearson correlation. There are also other ones, Spearman correlation coefficient for specific situations when the data is not normal, for example. So, yeah. so but as we are typically always dealing with the normal case, so so here we have those uh, like minus one means a negative covariance. Uh, between minus one and zero, something like this, which is exactly not minus one. This is almost perfect negative correlation. And this is a semi-perfect negative correlation. And this is a semi-perfect positive correlation. This is an extremely positive correlation. And this is no correlation. So uh, the p-value can vary between minus one and one. Typically, I think in machine learning, when you calculate the correlations, it's hardly above 0.5. Oh, you correlation heat map in the SNS, which is C1 or who is it? So it's, what's the, it's hardly, you find just one or two cells which are highly correlated. 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is hardly the case. It's not easy to find co correlations. So you, you all, it's primarily between minus 0 0.3, 0 0.3, you will find much of the correlation present. Baki ye thoda sa, as examples, hain. you can generate these graphs on Python as well for your own understanding. Okay, so now we come to this. Uh, okay, clear? Hai? Covariance and correlation. So it's just a simple call in Python. All of these are simple calls in Python. Conditional probability calculation, probability density calculation, marginal calculation. Just one function call and it's going to calculate. But you need to understand ke what's happening from the inside. Again. Okay. Um, 
in machine learning we have algorithms svm neural network uh, random forest every algorithm has its parameters and our job is to learn the values of those parameters that's it in the case of deep learning and neural networks we are learning the values of weights and biases in the case of svm we are estimating the uh, the kernel function which kernel function is good the value of c uh, soft margin in the case of random forest what is the hyperparameter random forest mein kaun sa hyperparameter hota hai the number of trees is one parameter which we the other is the depth kis depth tak jana hai in this way every algorithm has its parameters and when you say ki i want to apply one algorithm on my data that means ke you are basically learning the values of those parameters that's that's the job of machine learning all the wrangling that you are doing all the transformation that you're doing is to facilitate the learning of the parameters right so one of the ways in which we can learn the values of parameters is the maximum likelihood estimation it's a very simple method just try to understand okay uh so we find out the parameter values such as such that they maximize the likelihood of us observing the data ke okay, acha i am given this training data i am given this algorithm what are the what is the what are the parameters of this algorithm which will maximize the chance of me getting this data basically i have to now ab yahan pe wo concept maine aapko bilkul pehle lecture mein bataya tha ki we have a population which follows some particular distribution and i sample from that distribution to generate more different samples so my guess is ki jo training data mere paas aaya hai that has been sampled from some probability distribution i actually want to estimate the parameters of that probability distribution which has sampled this data or in the case of algorithm i assume ke svm is the best fit for my data because in that you have to select one algorithm you can't experiment with 10 algorithms and present the results to the to the client you have to select one algorithm at the end so let's assume ke for me svm is always the best algorithm so my data generating distribution is based on svm so therefore i am estimating the parameters of svm algorithm understand basic concept ko samajh le basic concept ye hai ke the training data that you have is coming from some joint probability density function if you can estimate the parameters of that distribution you have estimated training data that is machine learning that is exactly machine learning when when the machine learning estimates the values of some parameters and says ke ha yaar svm a fit ho gaya aapke data pe what does it what is what does it mean it means ke svm is now able to generate the population data svm has now control of the data generating density function that is what it means so when you estimate the parameter values you are in fact estimating the original density function which is generating the data why because jab aap apne model ko deploy karenge to aapke paas testing data aayega live which was never given to you before and your model will continue to perform well on that testing data 70% 72% that 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 means exactly that right ke svm has estimated the population density parameter see is this thing clear you need to be clear on this concept very much ke estimating the parameters of a machine learning algorithm means ke i have estimated the parameters of the data generating distribution now i have control of the distribution so now all the testing data that comes in later on it is going to give a good accuracy on my sql algorithm because it i have the distribution in my control ha huh. if your distribution changes if your customer change their behaviors change then your model is going to stop performing then that means ki you have to reestimate or relearn the distribution again because aapki population change ho rahi hai theek hai samajh mein aa gayi so that is the purpose is not to apply the algorithm the purpose is to understand the population distribution okay 
सो वी हैव टू नाउ ठीक है ये चीज क्लियर हो गई नाउ वी हैव टू थिंक ऑफ वेज इन विच वी कैन एस्टिमेट द पैरामीटर्स अब अगला सवाल तो ये पैदा होता है ना कि हाउ कैन वी डू इट तो व्हाट्स द मोस्ट सिंपलेस्ट वे द सिंपलेस्ट वे इज टू ट्राई आउट अ मिलियन पॉसिबल वैल्यूज एंड सी व्हिच वन फिट्स बेस्ट इज दैट अ गुड वे इट्स नॉट अ गुड वे अनलेस आई गिव यू अ पर्टिकुलर रेंज जैसे ग्रिड सर्च में हम करते हैं आई गिव यू अ रेंज के यू हैव थ्री पैरामीटर्स तो पैरामीटर 1 1 टू 9 पैरामीटर 2 3 टू 8 parameter 3 25 to 35 theek hai yaar all possible come let's try it out that's easy but if it is a continuous case then how can i do it so mle is the is the simplest possible uh, case that is uh, that occurs here so let's take an example theek hai so we have these uh, 10 data points uh, from some process that means the population okay uh each data point could represent the length of time in seconds that it takes a student to answer a specific exam question so how much time does it take g yeah uh, gradient descent is a better approach than uh, mle gradient descent ka jo it's one of the approaches for estimating the ideal parametric values um grid search isliye hum karte hain kyunki if we have the business knowledge that this parameter is supposed to vary in this for example i will say i will just need 300 trees i need between 200 to 300 trees and that gives me a best model i will personally make that uh, decision so it will be okay for me wo aapki business value ki facilitate karne ke liye Okay, so I have taken ten observations of uh, the time taken to attempt an exam. Ten students, so ten observations. Okay. Now, we have to first decide which model we think best describes the process of generating the data. Again, the question is the same. Okay. कि हमने मॉडल कौन सा यूज करना है टू टू एस्टिमेट दी टू एस्टिमेट दिस डेटा सो लेट्स एज्यूम के दिस डेटा इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अ गॉजियन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जस्ट फॉर एन एग्जांपल लेट्स एज्यूम के ये जो पॉइंट्स आ रहे हैं टाइम टेकन टू अटेम्प्ट एन एग्जाम इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अ गॉजियन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट्स द सिंपलेस्ट पॉसिबल एग्जाम्पन सो देन हाउ मेनी पैरामीटर्स आई हैव टू एस्टिमेट व्हिच वंस मीन एंड स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन of that particular distribution theek hai and gaussian is plausible because you know this seems centered around the mean and this is a bit of a skew towards the left and right side so it it seems it, it is it is coming from a gaussian so in this case if i try out different gaussians four gaussians so this blue one i think best fits the curve is the best fitting curve so i need the pink one the blue one the green one the yellow one and this this one this particular one is i think the best fit for this data but i i i have to estimate the parameters right ye to main visually bata raha hu na theek hai so which curve was most likely that's why it's called the maximum likelihood estimation which curve was most likely responsible for creating the data points that we observe we are not trying to estimate the population uh distribution mle will find the values of mu and sigma that result in the curve the best fits the data theek hai so how do we do that very simple uh so let's take another example for that so let's say i have these three points um so what we need is the joint probability distribution which includes these three points right 9 9.5 and 11 uh for to calculate the joint we need to calculate the conditional which can get very difficult so we take the assumption that each data point is generated independently of the others that's the first assumption we take so that we can multiply them and uh, uh, make things simpler ye to aapko pata hi hai na ki independent mein kya hota hai everything becomes simpler probability of y given x equals to probability of y it becomes simple so I assume that each point is coming independently of all the other points. Any doctor Bali's exam, his time, his exam time, his exam time, his exam time, all are independent of each other. 
So that's a, that's an okay assumption. And uh, this assumption is in fact true for the training data as well. IID assumption jump karte identically and independently distributed. Every row is independent of every other row. So that's a safe assumption to make. Okay. So let's after we make this assumption, then what? Now uh, this is the function PDF of the normal curve. If I am assuming that I have these three points, then and all are independent, then I have this formula. I just plug in nine here, nine point five here, eleven here, and mu and sigma remain the same because the curve is the same. Distribution is the same, eh? Na? Data points are different, but the distribution is the same. So therefore, mu and sigma will remain the same. Okay. Now I have to solve this. So the best way to solve is to differentiate. Always remember, okay, uh, I take the difference, uh, differentiation of this function, equate that to zero. That means either a minimum or a maximum. So I'm maximizing at the maximal, the differential is zero because I'm trying to find the maximum likelihood estimate, right? At the maximum likelihood estimate, the differentiation is zero. So I have to differentiate this function, put that equal to zero and solve for mu and sigma, right? Uh, but the point is that uh, in this case, differentiating this function will become very, very difficult because of the complexity of the formula. So what we do is that we take the natural log. log likelihood. ये मैंने आपको बताया भी था कि log likelihood एक distribution भी है शायद. Is that the real? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. What we do is that if we want to differentiate the normal distribution, we take the log of that. Natural log. So natural log is monotonically increasing. What that what that means is that if in the original PDF the probability is increasing then in the log, the probability will also be increasing at that particular point. You know, I, you know I, if, if this is the PDF, for example, I don't want to take a function which does the PDF like this. Log is a transformation, right? Just to facilitate the calculation, log is a transformation. So, I don't want transformation which will make my probability overlate. If you are transforming, then at least keep the shape same. Uska proportion same rakho ke. If the probability is increasing here, then it should also be increasing there. You understand? So that is called monotonically increasing. So natural log is a monotonically increasing function. So that at that particular X value, if the probability is increasing in the original case, then for the natural log, the probability will also be increasing. So it is not going to disturb the probability. So that's why I do the log transformation. And this is why the log transformation is very famous in machine learning. Natural log ho gaya, dusra log ho gaya, logarithmic uh, 10, base 10 log. <coughs> because the function is monotonically increasing and it brings it within a particular range. So it becomes more controllable. So I will show you the graph here. You can see here, if this is the original one, then the log is like this. So the, the, the proportion is the same. So if I take the natural log, natural log equates to this, and this natural log becomes this, and uh, this becomes uh, this, and mu becomes this. So mu is 9.83 in this case. And similarly, I can solve for that. But what happened to sigma squared? <laughs> if I take the natural log with, huh? natural log with respect to mu. Uh, this is uh, d ln over this, du is one over sigma square nine plus this plus this. So, uh -huh. so this will become zero because the differential is zero. Partial derivative is zero at the, so this becomes zero. If this becomes zero, then I take multiply sigma squared by zero again zero. So simply I have to put three, three u I bring here, three mu I bring here, and this is nine plus nine point nine plus eleven divided by three. So it becomes nine point eight double three. Yeah, this will not come in the exam. This is just a conceptual thing to understand. Okay, clear? So what we learned, 
maximum likelihood estimate is giving me a way of estimating the parameters of the data generating distribution or the parameters of the algorithm. How do I do that? I take the formula for that particular algorithm or I assume the formula for that distribution. I take the uh, difference, differentiation, put that equals to zero and then solve for the parameters. <coughs> that is the way to find out the maximum likelihood estimate. So ugly bar jab I baat karo MLE, you should know what is happening. Okay? Uh, MLE does not always provide the right answer. It cannot always solve it. So it was a simple case. So, but if it is not Gaussian, so MLE cannot always solve it. So therefore, we make an extension like EM, which we will do in one of the later uh, lectures, inshallah, tara, which our expectation maximization is an extension of the MLE method to better estimate the variables. Okay? Just, just remember that MLE does not always give you the best result. Okay. Uh, and some people say, okay, why don't you say probability? Why the likelihood? So that the, the, uh, the reality is there's no difference between the likelihood and the probability. The point, the difference is only in the concept. Okay, when I say okay, probability of a given data, so I'm talking about the, the density of observing the data with model parameters, mu and this. But when I talk about the likelihood, Likelihood, I'm talking about the parameters. When I'm talking about the probability, I'm talking about the data. That's it. That's the only difference. The basic concept is exactly the same. Whether it is the likelihood or it is the probability is the same thing. What makes your data most probable? What makes your data most likely? Is there any difference between these two statements? There's no difference. The difference is only in how you see it. Say yeah. Oh, so now we start the clustering. It's uh, very simple. Starting out here. Acha chale, bas yahan tak kar lein. K means playground tak. Theek hai. You know about this K means, right? Kya khana khane jaa? Ab agar aapko itna pada hai ki bhook lag gayi, mere taraf se ijazat hai. Main to I can't eat. So I'm, I'm on a very strict diet right now. So uh, the string is what one of the topics that we have to do is unsupervised learning. What is unsupervised learning? Huh? Labels are not there. So what do we do? Eh? Classification? Classification? Create the labels. Why? Centroid, what's that? Similar features or similar rows? Yes. When you don't have any labels, then the only way to make sense out of data is to group those rows together which are similar to each other. So we need to have similarity function to determine the similarity between the rows. The, the most simple similarity function is what? Nam, Nam, Euclidean, that's it. To find out the distance between two rows, provided all the numbers are, all are numbers. So Euclidean distance. And uh, I think the, the general function is the Minkowski. The Minkowski major big parameter one, hota hai, that becomes the Manhattan distance. When it is two, it becomes the Euclidean distance. When it is three, it becomes, I don't know, IBA distance or whatever. Yeah. We'll see. The, so if you have data like this, then you're very lucky. So I can group them into two clusters, okay? So when you, when you group them into cluster, then each cluster has a centroid. So in a cluster, if I have 5,000 rows, in one cluster, if I have 5,000 rows, but they will be represented by just one row, which is the centroid. So yes, come, they can seen what they can get. Like, let's see if I have these two columns and I have this training data over two columns. And let's say that these 25 rows are in one cluster and 25 rows are in the other cluster. So 
this cluster is going to be represented by the cent centroid of these 25. Centroid kaise calculate karenge? I'm asking what a centroid is. Huh? Yeah, so mean of all these, comma mean of all these, that's the centroid for the cluster one. And mean of all these and mean of all these, that's the centroid for the cluster two. That's the coordinate. So clustering karne ka fayda kya hua? 100 rows become just two rows. I, I, I don't need to consider 100 rows. I just take it two, two clusters, centroid A, and I play with the centroid. That's it. The main thing is ki kon si row kon si cluster mein jayegi. That's the main thing that we need to do. We're not going to be uh, going into the details of that. You just need to understand right now that this is an iterative approach. Uh, in which I first select the centroid randomly and assign the rows to the centroids. Then I update the centroids, then assign the rows again. Then I update the centroids, then assign the rows again until everything converges. So uh, let's see some uh, this uh, Nafta Ali Harris. Uh, so I have this, uh, we have this playground here. So in this case, I can uh, choose the randomly and I can take the DB scan rings. DB scan is also an algorithm that we have to do. I can add, let's say again, four centroids here uh, and I can say go. So first of all, it will assign the nearest ones to the centroid. Then it will update the centroid, then reassign the points, update, reassign, update. You can see that the region is changing. So now everything is clear. So this red point is the central value of all these. But uh, in this case, it is possible to have overlap as well. It is possible that you have overlap. Kar jahe, or, uh, uh, that is why we have the Gaussian mixture. Because uh, what happens is that this, this is pretty deterministic. In this case, I have no idea what is the probability that this point lies in this cluster. I can't make any claim. So Gaussian mixture kya karta hai ke it learns a Gaussian distribution for each cluster. The Gaussian mixture learns a Gaussian distribution for each cluster and that makes things really flexible. And that, because in, in that case, I, if I have a point on the boundary, I cannot force it to be on one side. It is boundary. So it is 50% here and 50% there. So k-means cannot model that. But a Gaussian mixture can model that. A Gaussian is saying this point has a 50% probability of red and a 50% probability of blue. So that makes clustering more effective, a Gaussian mixture model. That's the next thing that we have to do. Yeah. I guess uh, we can stop now because I think you guys are all tired. It is a uh, it is an application of probabilistic concepts to K-means algorithm. So every, uh, every cluster has its own normal distribution. Uh, and you have to estimate the parameters of those distribution. Separate mu, separate uh, sigma. No, 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 no. Gaussian mixture is completely separate. It has a separate algorithm. So we have to, acha, um, I'm stopping the recording now.